You know, it's kind of weird. We did make a video similar to this one a few weeks ago, talking about the whole goodbye Petrangelo angle and whether or not he actually would re-sign with the St. Louis Blues. However, that was a few weeks ago before we ended up seeing what was eventually the fallout of contract negotiations between St. Louis Blues captain and the team that he plays for. We've gone over this a few times, but if you indeed are out of the loop, Alex Petrangelo is a 30-year-old right-handed defenseman, a big guy who was the captain of the Blues for the past few seasons. He wrapped up what was a very, very successful 52 points in 70 games played campaign in the regular season, and last year in the playoffs, the guy had 19 points in 26 games. He is one of the best St. Louis Blues defenders of all time, and he is a guy who quite literally is indeed going to be capable of getting upwards of $9 million in the offseason. But, apparently, the contract negotiations with the team that ended up drafting him all the way back in 2008, apparently that whole situation has not been fun. We've made videos about this before, how Petrangelo himself has reportedly been somewhat disappointed in the whole contract negotiation process, and it appears that Petrangelo's time in St. Louis has already come to an end. So let's talk about this article over here on The Score, talking about five realistic teams that may be able to get Petrangelo as a landing spot. The big one is the first one that we've talked about several times before, the Toronto Maple Leafs. More rumors have come out about Petrangelo and how he potentially would want to be a Toronto Maple Leaf, and I know the biggest question when it comes to a guy like Alex Petrangelo, a number one right-handed defenseman who can demand upwards of $8.59 million, something like that. The biggest question with Toronto is, okay, but with what cap space? They got themselves a little bit extra dough from the cap and in trade, but what else is there in store? This is why the idea of trading Nylander, trading Marner, trading Janssen, all these guys, that's why their names have entered this discussion. And believe me, we can make a lot of videos talking about trading any of those guys, but for the sake of just talking about Petrangelo and the Leafs, I saw some people putting out the hot take that if Petrangelo goes to Toronto, he is already the best right-handed defenseman the team has ever had. And I guess that's saying a lot when talking about the rest of the Toronto Maple Leafs' right-handed defenseman history. It sure would be great, but who knows if that's even on the radar for something of a Kyle Dubas to even be able to afford. So let's move on to the next team here in this article before we get too deep into Toronto talk like we have in previous videos. The Boston Bruins are over here as well, and we indeed spoke about the Bruins back in our Goodbye Petrangelo video, talking about whether or not Tory Krug is actually going to be able to re-sign. Because if a guy like Tory Krug ends up walking, you end up opening a free spot on your decor. It could be a very good opportunity to come in with a guy like Alex Petrangelo and play him as a number one right-handed D-man in front of Charlie McAvoy. It could be a a very interesting dynamic here, going from a left-handed guy into a crew who can get points, albeit in a very slick and offensively oriented kind of way, or you can turn to an Alex Petrangelo, who can produce, probably at a similar rate, but who does a very different process to actually get those points. And before we go any further, yes, cue in the memes of a St. Louis Blues captain going over to Boston and becoming bad. We saw that with Bacchus, I don't know if we would see a similar thing with Petrangelo, but Let's just use this time to hit us with the memes real quick. Next up on the list here, it is the Colorado Avalanche, another team that we did talk about in our Goodbye Petrangelo video. Avalanche territory is a difficult one, because in a year they're going to have to re-sign Kale McCarr to a big contract. They also have that Gabriel Landeskog as a guy to re-sign as well. So, there have been speculative reports from guys like Elliot Friedman, etc., who have mentioned the idea of the Colorado Avalanche going all in for 2020-2021. They made it to the second round this past postseason, they lost to the Dallas Stars after tying the series up at Game 7, and now they're in a position where if they wanted to go all out, with the very extended amount of cap space that they do have, imagine going after a Taylor Hall and an Alex Petrangelo. Imagine the boost to your lineup in that way. All of a sudden, you take a team that was already super good on paper, and you add the best UFA free agent forward and the best UFA free agent D-man. That sounds pretty stacked, eh? And this was a lineup that already got to the second round this most previous postseason. Imagine what they could do with those acquisitions. 
add to that, hey, you guys still have that Bowen Byram over there improving, marinating in the WHL. All of a sudden, if you have a top four decor of Samuel Girard, Alex Petrangelo, Ryan Graves, and Kayla Carr, not to mention with the Bowen Byram coming in there, replacing Nikita Zadorov on your left side, this is a number one decor. Number one, hands down. And then finally, we have ourselves two other teams that we have had in this conversation here. The first one is the Calgary Flames, a team who was actually not mentioned in our very first video that we talked about Petrangelo potentially leaving. Calgary is one of those teams that indeed needs to get over that hump. We thought they did in 2015 when they had the emergence of 18-year-old Sam Bennett, Johnny Gaudreau, Sean Monaghan, and Yuri Hoodler, of all people, were dominating the league, and they made it to the second round of the playoffs. We thought that was the hump being conquered, but no, after that it was kinda downhill from there, and now, if an Alex Petrangelo is a guy on the market, a Flames team with $17 million in cap space would be able to actually get things done, according to this article. Imagine a number one pairing of Giordano Petrangelo. My goodness, does that not sound crazy good. If Giordano can go back to Norris form and Petrangelo can remain at the echelon of play that he has been in in the past few seasons, he was literally like fourth in Norris voting, by the way, a pairing like this could totally rock the entire Pacific Division, and I personally would not want to see that. I'm a Vancouver Canucks fan, I would not want to see Calgary do this, I do not want to see Calgary do better. But, at the same time, because the reality could potentially exist, it's why it's being discussed here in this article, that's why we're talking about it here today. And another team that probably would not want to see Calgary do all too well either is the Edmonton Oilers, the last and fifth team here to be discussed in this article as to whether or not Alex Petrangelo could be a fit for. We did indeed talk about Petrangelo in the same video we mentioned earlier. Three out of the five teams ended up being mentioned twice. It was the Oilers, it was the Avalanche, and it was the Bruins. But this Oilers team is a team that isn't really in need of any extra defenders. But hey, if you have the opportunity of getting an Alex Petrangelo, then I don't see why not. The projected lineups over here on the score don't actually have... Adam Larson as a player, because the insinuation is that he gets traded because he is a guy who really did not produce all too well. If you want to talk about Oilers defenseman trades, we made an entire video talking about the idea of them trading two of Bear, Larson, Clefbaum, and Darnell Nurse in order to make room for Broberg and or Bouchard. I don't really know too much about that idea and how good it would be, but if you want a right-handed guy, you have an Alex Petrangelo who may be available on the market. So having this guy in the first pairing alongside a cleft bomb like it's projected over here does sound really good. And if you want to actually have that youthful connection in your lineup too, then hey, replace a Chris Russell with an Evan Bouchard. Have this guy learn alongside of what is one of the best right-handed defenders in the entire game today and teach him the ropes of what it means to be an NHL defender. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I know if I was an NHL GM, I probably would want my guys to develop beside a Petrangelo rather than an Adam Larson. Sorry, man, you're just not as good as Taylor Hall was. And I know, I can't really get by bringing up Adam Larson's name without mentioning the Taylor Hall trade at least once, but the point remains. So, out of all these teams over here that we have discussed on this article, Toronto, Calgary, Edmonton, the three Canadian teams, as well as Colorado and Boston, what exactly do you think would be the tail of the tape if Alex Petrangelo signed with any of these teams? Because the short answer is, well, they get better. A team without Petrangelo is worse than a team with Petrangelo right? But what are the deeper implications of that? If it's Colorado, do they end up going to the cup finals? Do they win a cup with Petrangelo and maybe a Taylor Hall too? If it's Boston, do they go back to the finals too? Do they avenge their former souls and win their second cup in a decade? Man, I just kind of threw up in my mouth saying that. As for Calgary or Edmonton, is this enough for them to get over that hump? Calgary hasn't made the second round in years. Edmonton has only made the second round with McDavid once, and they haven't really been all too great making the playoffs either because they got eliminated in the play-ins this most recent season. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea. I'm not even going to mention Toronto because that's the big one, but I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.